Well, good evening. Here we are for our Good Friday service, and we'll have communion as a part of this, and we're also going to give you a message and do some special music as well. But let's begin with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the, the blessing that it is to have our Lord and Savior come to this earth, become one of us, die in our place, pay the penalty for our sin, and give us freedom from the death that we all deserve, the total and eternal separation from God. I thank you, Lord, that in your willingness to walk with, uh, with God Almighty, that you, as God, also were accepting of the idea that God, in the midst of this time, would have to turn his back on you, and that you would say, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Because, Lord, you wanted it to be where you could say to me, and to every person listening who knows you as Savior, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I thank you for what this communion means to each of us and this service here tonight and what you've brought us when you gave yourself to die. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's sing the old favorite together, the old rugged cross, number 247, the old rugged cross. Let's sing that together. Father, 
overseeing all of what's happening to us, and we love them. Uh, at this time, uh, Amy and Ariana are going to come and give you a special song.
and having as our main focus and what we really want, we should have that what we want to be is exact replica pictures of our Lord and Savior, of Jesus Christ. That's how closely we should abide and walk with Him. And I want to show you that that's exactly what Jesus did. Now, you might say, well, that's unfair, Pastor, because Jesus is God, and He's walking with God, and so it becomes awful easy to walk with God when you're God. Folks, He was tempted in all ways, just like we were. That's what Hebrews tells us. And you need to realize that the most important thing that you can recognize in who God is, is that He was 100% human and 100% God. And He chose to stay where He belonged, with God. Not when He came to this earth, no, no, no. He was 100% human, but even then, He did what God would want Him to do. That's what we should be. In the world, not of it. Look with me, starting in John chapter 5. John chapter 5, and in John chapter 5, we're going to look at verse 19. It's the first one we're going to look at here tonight um, for your Good Friday service. John chapter 5, verse 19. Verse 19 tells us, Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, The Son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth, the Father do. For what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. Again, I submit to you that our purpose should be that we can't do anything without God. And that whatever God is doing, that's what we're doing. And as we look at this idea of walking with God, notice that Jesus on this earth, you know, a lot of times when you've grown up in restrictions and, and uh, you know, children that have had a, that special bubble placed around, they have a real problem sometimes when they get out, right? Jesus gets away from God and he stays walking with God the entire time. He, 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 he was doing what he was supposed to. Now, I get it again. God is everywhere. And it's not like Jesus was truly, uh, um, you know, out of the house. But I think it's the same thing when it comes to parents, isn't it? Listen, what did he do? The Bible says his attitude was, I can do nothing without God. And so whatever God is going to do, I'm going to do. Look at verse 30, similar idea. I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge. And my judgment is just. What's he saying the reason for his just judgment is? Because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father which has sent me. Do you know what messes up we Christians quite a bit? Because somehow we allow our own will to seep into our decisions. The Bible tells us that at times we don't even know the own uh, thoughts and intents of our own heart. And we have to ask God for help. We need Him to try the, the reins to see whether we've got pure motives. And the reason why is because all of us struggle with allowing self to underneath be a part of the decision. But Jesus is telling us that I can't do anything of my own, and I seek not my own. My goal is to do the Father's will. You see how he's walking with God? Look at chapter 8. Chapter 8 and verse 28 is the next one we're going to look at. There's a lot more in there. The whole entire book of John is seen talking about this in some fashion or another. But we're going to look at a few passages in chapter 8, chapter 10, chapter 15, chapter 17, chapter 14, those kind of things, okay? But here we are in chapter 8. We're going to look at verses 28 and 29 this time. Chapter 8, verse 28 and 29. It says, Then said Jesus unto them, When ye have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall ye know that I am He, and that I do nothing of myself. But as my Father had taught me, I speak these things, and he that sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. Folks, we can preach a message on these two verses alone, but please, notice again. What is Jesus saying? I do nothing of myself. He says, uh, I, 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 when you lift me up, you're going to know that I am he. He says that uh, uh, everything that I speak is, is things from Him. The Father has taught me. He's given them to me. Look, 
Shouldn't that be us Christians when we're walking with God? That what we say is what we've been taught by God? Shouldn't we be that close? I mean, look, I expect that, that I implant into my children, and, and my wife, we implant into our children certain things. And then when they get to that certain age where they start making their own decisions, there is no greater joy, Paul says, than to find that your children walk in truth, right? Well, listen, this is what God wants. He wants me to speak what He's taught me. He wants me to walk the way He's taught me to walk. And He says, and He that sent me is with me. He wants me to know that He's right there, guiding every step, and helping me to do exactly what He wants. Father hath not left me alone, for I always do those things. Wouldn't you like to say that? I'm walking with God, and I always do the things that please Him. Folks, we're very good at grading our own paper. We're very good at saying that we have done a good job. We're kind of weak in the idea of allowing God to say, well done. Jesus here is not bragging. He's telling us the truth. I have tied myself to God and I have done exactly what God wanted me to do. Do we walk that way? Look at verse 38. Verse 38 says, I speak that which I have seen with my father, and ye do that which ye have seen with your father. Now this is kind of a, a backwards slap to the Pharisees, because the honest truth is, is that they are following after the devil, and so even though they think they're representing God, uh, he's telling them you don't. Folks, isn't that where a lot of Christians are? Doing a lot of things on their own, off on their own, demanding God to do things their way, expecting God to handle it the way they tell Him to, and all of these different things. Rather than saying, God, if you want me here, if you want me involved in this, if you want me a part of this, if this is where you brought me, this is where I want to be. And I want to do it the way you intended. I told you that when I was in the hospital, that I did pretty well with this, grade my own paper. Until we got to the very end. And, and they told me I could go home. And then the next two days, it was every roadblock you could possibly find to where before the weekend came, the end result is I wasn't going home. But the Lord knows what he's doing. And he also knows how he wants to talk to people and what he wants to use me for. And I had to get over that selfish desire in a hurry. Because nurses came in that had taken care of me countless times, probably ten times during the days that I was in there, the three weeks. People that had been really sweet. And I didn't want to mistreat them. Folks, you listen. We struggle sometimes, all of us, with our own way of thinking about things. And we act like we don't have God as our Father. But if we're going to walk like Jesus, He was a true picture of God the Father. Again, I know you say, but he's God, and that's not fair. It's harder on us. Yeah, but God tells us that he gives us everything we need to walk this way. And that it's our own sin nature. He even tells us he put that sin nature to death. But it's our own sin nature that we allow to rule us, that causes us to struggle in these areas. Well, listen, let's look at the next one. Chapter 10, verse 29. Chapter 10, verse 29. Chapter 10 and verse 29 of John and verse 30. We see here that Jesus says, My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. Please note that God says what God has given me. Again, I get the idea of that God wants us to work hard and He wants us to do things and put great effort in. I believe that that's the way I've lived my life and trying to put maximum effort into everything that I do. But I want to tell you something. I must realize that it's all God and not me. Look, look what Jesus said. My Father which gave them me. Listen. He's going to die. 
He's going to pay the penalty for my sin. And yet, somehow, it's Jesus saying God gave them to him. Do you see how this works? And notice that he says, I and my Father are one. Again, that's our theme for tonight. I and my Father are one. And I wanted to ask you, as we're going through this, how are you doing at being a true Christian? You know, not those people that walk around and say they're Christians. But the Bible says there's a Christ-like, that's what the word Christian actually means. A Christ-like one. When you see them, you see Christ. Like Jesus said, when you see me, you see God the Father. Look at the next passage. Chapter 14, chapter 14 and verse 9. Chapter 14, we're going to look at verse 9 and 10. In verse 9, he says, Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then? Show us the Father. Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. He doeth the works. Folks, again, do you notice that God the Son, who is walking on this earth, 100% God, is telling you that everything that He does is a true example and picture of God the Father, that is there and is a part of this, and that God does all the works and all the words. Shouldn't that be us? Shouldn't that be us in the way we approach things? That when people see us, they see God the Father at work. And God the Father's words. To me, this is the real picture of walking with God. Let's look at the, the next passage I want to see with you is chapter 17. Chapter 17. This one's a little longer. We're going to do a, a little harder flyover because I have all 26 verses set up for you. And the reason why is because this is right before Jesus' death. And he is asking God to glorify him, to do what he's promised. He's giving this all into God's hand. <clears throat> you might even think that this is a greater prayer of, of what he's actually praying um, later on in uh, Mark chapter 15, 34 in the Garden of Gethsemane. When, he's, <clears throat> when he prays, my God, I'm sorry, not Mark, uh, in, in uh, Luke 22, not my will but thine, Lord. Luke 22, not my will but thine, Lord. You see, <clears throat> this is what we should be having as an attitude. But listen to his prayer. Then these words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify the Son, that thy Son also may glorify thee, as thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is eternal life, that they might know thee, only true God, and Jesus Christ, who now has sent. Folks, again, you see that even in asking for glorification, what is he doing? He is making it very clear that it's all about people knowing God. When I walk with God, when I am in communion with God the way I'm supposed to be, people should see God in me. He goes on and says, I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. That should be our call to God. I have glorified thee in the earth. I have made it my ultimate goal to walk in your footsteps, to go where you tell me to go, to say the words you tell me to do, to do the works you lay on my heart. And now, O oh Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Very interesting words, aren't they? First of all, that Jesus was there at creation. He was a part of the entire thing. And that God the Father and God the Son had a wonderful relationship before the creation even happened. And then please note, glorify thou me with thine own self with the glory which I had with thee. He was so willing to trust God to give up the rightful place that he walked with God and did whatever he wanted. He says, I have manifested or made clear thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. 
Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. Again, is Jesus saying, I've taught them well. I've done a great job. No, he's saying, these are yours, and you gave them to me, and I've used them the way you want me to, and they're still yours. It's beautiful, isn't it? Now, they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came out from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. Again, lots of words that says God sent me, God gave me the words, God told me what to say, and they're learning that if they follow me, they follow Christ. Sounds like something Paul once said, doesn't it? I pray for them, verse 9, I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. Again, they're yours. Even though these are my disciples, they're yours. And all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. Listen, we do this together, is pretty much what Jesus is saying. Do you understand that that's the way it's supposed to be? By the way, before all this happened, we were preaching to you that too often pastors think this is my church instead of this is God's church, and all of this is His. And my responsibility is to feed His sheep and to treat them the way He would treat them, teaching them, loving them, helping them, doing for them, and in that, uh, what I'm doing is bringing about pictures of Jesus Christ. Folks, too often we, we like to to, to grab the reins and say, I'm going to do this. And I'm not just saying as a church, I'm saying in so many different areas of life. We don't like something that's happening, and we grab the reins, or it's out of control, and we do not like it. Folks, we need to realize this is all God's. I love what Ken Ham has been putting out during this time. If you don't uh, know anything about that, you should look up his, his website, his blog, I'll just tell you, he recognizes that everything he has, that he's been working for and spent his whole life in ministry doing, is all the Lord's. And whatever happens to it, it's God's, so it's his job. I just want to tell you something. We need to think more like that. Verse 11 goes on and says, And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to thee, Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. Lord, work in them and help them to become one as we are. Remember our theme verse for our walk series? How can two walk together except they be agreed? Listen, Amos 3.3 is telling us not that we should all decide how to compromise with each other. That is not what it's talking about. It is teaching me, first of all, how can I walk with God if I don't learn to agree with Him? To walk His way. And we become one, the better we walk with God and do things the way God would do them. It goes on and says in verse 12, While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me, I have kept. And none of them is lost, but the son of perdition that the scripture might be fulfilled. The only one gone is Judas. And that was because you had planned that from the beginning. And now come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Notice what he's saying. The disciples, the apostles, and they haven't arrived yet. They're going to make big mistakes in the next few hours. But what, are they, what is he saying? They're no longer a part of this world. I'm out of this world because I'm walking with you. They're not of this world because they're walking with me while they walk with you. Do you get how this works? This is what God really wants out of all of us. I pray, verse 15, not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. Protect them. Keep them true to the walk in the faith, to a right relationship with God. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify, make them clean, set them apart, them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. 
Keep them tied to the truth. One of the keys on how we walk. Keep them tied to the truth. You remember when Jesus was tempted, what his answer was? The scripture saith. Folks, if we can learn to do this in our walk, we'll find that God does some miraculous things on our behalf. As he teaches us and shows us and guides us and allows us to be a part of winning and changing our society and our world for Christ. We want revival. We have to walk God's way, not our own. Verse 18. As thou hast sent me into uh, the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, I set myself apart, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. They're following me, and I am following you, and we want to keep it that way, right? Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. That they all may be one, as thou, Father, are in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. Again, sounds like uh, confusing words. I in thee, and thee in me. Okay? But, but listen, what God is actually saying is what we have. Uh, don't we say, uh, accept Jesus Christ in your heart? God's are in me. But how often do we actually act like God is there to guide my every step? To, to teach me exactly what I should do and what I should say. The scripture is full of such things. Verse 22. And the glory which thou gavest me I, did, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. I and them, and thou and me, that they may be, may be, that, that they may be made perfect uh, in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and hast loved them, as thou hast loved me. Father, I will that they also, whom thou given, hast given me, be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. Again, please note that Jesus is saying, you've given me the glory. You've given me this position. You've given me this responsibility. O righteous Father, verse 25, the world hath not known thee, but I have known thee. But I have known thee, and these have known that thou hast sent me. And I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it, that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. Folks, aren't those last two verses the real call of Christianity? That people who don't know God see that I have a relationship with God and that it's real. And that the love that God has towards me in my heart is now being given, shown, and used to help others in theirs. So that in the end, we're creating that relationship. You see, when I walk with God, what I do is I become more like God. Because I learn to walk and follow in His footsteps. I want to imitate God in every way. No, I'm not saying become gods. What I'm telling you is become a Christian. Not just in word, Jesus come into my heart, but in life. I want to be like Christ. A couple more thoughts before we get to our, our closing um, uh, argument here in chapter 15. First of all, I've already pointed out to you that Jesus showed you this attitude of life in Luke 22, 42, when he tells Jesus, there in Gethsemane, I mean, when he tells God there in Gethsemane, not my will, but thine be done. You remember he's asking God to take away the cup? And he's not so focused on that I don't want this. I've told you before that I believe that that cup is not the death. The Bible tells us he willingly went to the cross. I believe that that is actually pointing to that moment in time when God will turn his back on him. And he says in, in uh, Mark 15, 34, he says, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Folks, all of this is the picture of Jesus has never been or felt separated from God. How about us? I'll never leave you nor forsake you. 
That's what God says. And we want to have him with us all the time. And we do. But too often, we're not walking with him. We're doing our own thing. And we feel like he's not there. He is. Folks, do you know that Jesus at the very end was so trusting of his father that instead of fighting for life like most people would, he says in Luke 23, 46, Into thy hands I command my spirit. Folks, you talk about someone who says, I'll walk with God wherever he takes me. I'll do his will. And this was God's own son. What a sacrifice. What a, a, a true gift for us. To take the penalty of separation from God and to give us His righteousness so that we're never separated. And yet, we have this gift and we walk as if we have a different Father. Remember what Jesus said? I believe in 838 of John. We walk as if we have a different Father. Instead of walking with God. Look at one more passage with me. In closing here today before we partake of our communion. In John chapter 15. John chapter 15. You knew we had to go here. Those of you who know your scriptures, you knew we had to go here before we could finish this. This is our call. What God has asked us to do. John chapter 15, starting in verse 4. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. Remember Jesus kept saying, I couldn't do this by myself. This isn't by me, this is by God. Guess what? You have the same charge. You can't do this by yourself. You need God feeding you and helping you and strengthening you. Except it abide in the vine, no more can ye except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. You know what we need to work on? Being more fruitful. Do you know how we work on that? By abiding more clearly with nothing in the way of God feeding us. Because we're walking totally with him. Every word by him. Every thought by him. Every action by him doing everything He wants us to do because we're walking along holding God's hand doing exactly what God wants. Abide in Him. If a man abide not in me, verse 6, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered, and the men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. If ye abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. Folks, there's a lot more there that you could read. But I just want to tell you, we have a responsibility. And that is to walk with God to the place where we can say, just like Jesus, I can do nothing of myself. I need Him for everything. I, I need His help, and I want to walk with Him, and I want to hold His hand, and I want Him to guide every step. The, the Proverbs are full of verses that tell us that I'm supposed to look to God for every single thing, and His Word will light my path, and He'll direct me where I'm supposed to go. The, the, the Bible tells us over and over again while he's teaching the disciples, don't fret yourself about what you're supposed to say. Ask God, and he'll tell the words. He'll put the words in your mouth. And we see that again with Moses. That over and over and over again. Folks, the biggest problem we have is unlike Jesus, we let self cloud our ability to see the truth. And I want to encourage you, as we prepare in just a moment to partake of the communion, I want to encourage you to ask yourself, am I abiding in God? I'm not talking about just hooking yourself to Him for your, for your salvation and for a little bit of daily food. 
I'm talking about are you truly getting the nutrients you need to produce fruit? Are you being who you're supposed to be? Where the love of God is being felt in you and shown in you everywhere you go? Are you abiding in Jesus the way Jesus kept telling us that God and He were abiding in each other? That's our goal. I'd like you to bow your heads and close your eyes. As we prepare for the communion, first of all, I want to ask you two things. Number one, if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your, as your Savior, please don't partake of this until you've taken care of it. Now listen, I didn't say you're not allowed to take it. What I said is fix it. If you don't have Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, if you would die today and you say, Pastor, I don't know that I'm going to go to heaven, then I'll tell you what you need to do. You need to ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart. And you need to tell him, I know that I'm a sinner. I cannot save myself. You need to tell him that I, I realize that you, as God's son, came to this earth and died for me to give me my salvation. And I want you to come into my heart and save me. And friend, if you've asked that, then you are in communion with Jesus Christ. And we can mess things up and we can get sin in our life and we can do things that make it where it's hard for us to stay right with God. Listen, God's always there. Just like he was with Jesus. He'll never leave us nor forsake us. But what I need for each of us to do then is to analyze how am I doing in staying in touch with God? And if we need to take care of some things before we do this, please, even if you have to, pause the video and just take a moment pray and talk to God. Lord, I want to fix this. I want to be right with you. I want to do things differently. I want to walk with you the way I'm supposed to. Where we're one and the same. The Bible says don't partake unworthily. There's two ways we can do that. By partaking when we don't have Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. Or number two, by partaking without dealing with the things wrong in our heart. I've asked you to do and now, we're going to pray over the bread, which represents the body. And then I'm going to take a moment, and I'm going to serve it to my family here. Okay? And dads, if you're there, I want you to take it after we bless it and break it, and I want you to serve it to your family. And if you have to pause the video or whatever, that's fine. But let's do this together. Dear Lord Jesus, I thank you for the bread, which represents the body. I thank you, Lord, that you were so willing to allow your body to be bruised for me. That you desired to walk with me as we've been learning from the start with Adam. And Lord, that that relationship is something special where you're supposed to be able to direct me and teach me. And I pray that you forgive me for my times and trials where I've, where I've led my own self. Where I've not stay tied to God, where I haven't abided where I belong. And I pray, Lord, that right now as I look at this bread and as I partake of it and as I share it with my family and as my church family shares it with their families or in some cases all alone, I pray, Lord, that you'd bless this bread and you'd help us to cherish what it means and to not lightheartedly live the Christian life with no desire to truly walk with God. But instead, help us to find what it means to have real communion, like Jesus, the Son of God, had with God, the Holy Father. In Jesus' name.
Bible says, And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which was broken for you. This do in remembrance of me, in remembrance of him. It says, after the same manner, he also took the cup. So let us bow our heads again and pray over this juice, which represents the blood of Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you sent Jesus to shed his blood, that that blood gives us the remission of sin. Lord, that it cleansed us and made us free and clean from that which held us back from God Almighty and gave us that right relationship with you. And Lord, we again confess with our message today that too often we're complacent, we're lighthearted, we're, we're not really valuing that relationship the way we should. And Lord, we thank you for times like these that we're living in that would cause us to step back and to realize the need to, to do a better job of spending time in the Word, more time in prayer. And thank you for a time like this where really for a lot of us, that's the main thing we get to do. And I pray, Lord, that you would make this not a time of, of great depression and struggle for Christians, particularly for this church, but instead a great time where we have valued the blood of Jesus Christ, where we have cherished what it brought to us, and we have drawn so close to our loving Father that we truly do walk with him and we are examples of him. In Jesus' name, amen. same manner, he also took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as oft as ye drink it, in remembrance of me, in remembrance of him. I'd like to sing for you in closing today. Special him, day by day.
trust that every single day you'll walk with Jesus the way God intended for you to. Being just like Christ, a Christ-like one that is in his word, talking to him constantly, and having him direct your every step and your every word. And I hope that you stay safe until we see you on Sunday morning. We'll send out those videos at 7 o'clock, about 9.30, or about 8.30, sorry, 7 o'clock, about 8.30, and at 10. That's our goal. Um, 7 o'clock for the sunrise, 8.30 for the children's program, and then 10 o'clock for our service that we would normally have here at the church. Okay? And I hope until then, you stay safe, and you be right with the Lord, and you walk with Jesus. Bye.